Our next selector is Samantha Hunt. Samantha is the author of four books, The Dark Dark, Mr. Splitfoot, The Invention of Everything Else, and The Seeds. All four have great titles, which is tough to do. <laughs> She's received the Guggenheim Fellowship, the Bard Fiction Prize, this year 535, in a previous year, and has been a finalist for the Orange Prize and the Penn Faulkner. Please welcome Samantha. It's like walking beside a high, solid wall, moving slowly enough that something catches your eye, a knot hole. And when you align your eyeball and peer through, the world's not the world you expected, not the world that you were told would exist. Lydia Kiesling's gorgeous novel of mothering throws expectations away. Secrets are revealed to those patient enough to sit with a toddler, change diapers on a dirty bathroom floor, to walk a highway's median as cars rush past, to feel so small that there's time to watch the sun move, to watch the burn of a cigarette. Boredom's not the enemy. Rather, it permits the flood of quiet required by the sudden realizations that propel a compassionate, unalienated life. There is wisdom and slowness and patience. Sweeping, staggering philosophies are brewed in minds that have the space to comprehend the trick of our human bodies, the timeless, commodious universes we hold inside these small chambers called wombs, hearts, brains, hands. Kiesling's book asks, asks us to respect a new pace, a new breath. The Golden State is a novel of the micro, a road trip stacked with unlikelies, a confused mom whose husband has been deported, their sweet baby, and Alice, a 92-year-old woman so close to death that she carries its detachments with her. Kiesling brings these heroines straight up against the state of Jefferson, a selfish, armed to the teeth, separatist movement trying to secede from California. All politics are local, and the ocean is of course made up of raindrops. I don't have to tell you that the micro of a young mother contains the tremendous monumental macro of our entire universe. And anyway, Lydia Kiesling can do it far better. Congratulations on this well-deserved prize, and thank you for bringing us your extraordinary book. There you are. So, thank you. Thank you. thank you to the National Book Foundation and uh, to all the other honorees. Uh, I've never been in better company in my life, and uh, it's really amazing. I'm also almost 35, so <laughs> March 21st, uh, I made it. Um, okay, so I'm going to read. Before she died, my mother told me when she looked at me, she saw me at every age I had ever been, which makes me cry every time I think of it. When I tried to tell Anki and I choked so hard I had to go in another room until I could come back and get out the sentence. I thought that this all ages panoramic vision was something everyone got with motherhood, some new way of seeing. But whenever I look at Honey, she is the age she is at this moment and I strain and strain to see her perfect tiny baby head the first time she crawled, the first step she took, and the only thing I can see are the photos we took, photos which unbeknownst to me, us at the time of taking them would obliterate all other records. I wonder whether I have stunted my memories of my child with the very tool I used to capture her various epochs, or if women who didn't have cameras were left with nothing but the child they had at that moment, whatever age she happened to be. If in the absence of a camera, the only way to recall the memory of holding your sweet baby was to have another, grasping at something by its nature out of reach and aging and exhausting yourself in the process by suddenly having a whole herd of them to look after, any number of which could still then die or find some other way to break your heart. 
I think about having another baby and feel the thrill of longing and dread, although more longing since it's the idlest of fancies, since there's, since there's no one here to impregnate, impregnate me. I lie in the motel bed and concentrate very hard on honey as a baby. I remember sitting on the bed. I am holding a small baby. I try to enter the memory and look down and see her in my arms to be with my baby again. The next thing that happens is the sound of the alarm and the squawk of Honey, who is exactly the age she is and no younger. I sit up and see her standing, looking gleefully over the railing of the pack and plate, her curls twisted up in a peak above her high forehead. Good morning, Miss Critter, I say to her, and she beams at me. I crawl to the foot of the bed and reach into the pack and plate and drag her up onto the bed with me and lie back, and she lies on me and puts her head under my chin, and I'm thinking, keep this moment, let's keep this one. And while I'm trying to fossilize the moment or x-ray it or photocopy it or do something that will make it stay with me forever, she's squirming, thrashing, rolling, and she's off the bed. She's on the move. And suddenly I have what I think may be my most important epiphany about motherhood, which is that your child is not your property and motherhood is not a house you live in, but a worn of beautiful rooms, something like Topkapa, something like the Alhambra on a winter morning, some well-trod but magnificent place you're only allowed to sit in for a minute and snap a photo before you're ushered out, and you'll never remember every individual jewel of a room, but if you're lucky, you'll go through another and another and another and another until they finally turn out the lights. Thank you.